Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Mr. Boskin Does Some Math. Today we're doing illustrative math, grade 8, unit number 3, lesson 9, practice problems. Okay, our first question here says, suppose that during a long flight, the elevation in feet of a certain airplane and its time in minutes since takeoff are related by a linear equation. Consider the graph of this equation. With time represented on the horizontal axis and elevation on the vertical axis. For each situation, decide if the slope is positive, zero, or negative. So I'm just going to throw a quick graph here and it said time there elevation there what is this going to look like I've already got red so I'll make this one red the plane is cruising at an altitude of 37,000 feet above sea level we want to know if the slope is positive zero or negative if we are cruising at an altitude of 37,000 feet What's our slope gonna look like? We're just staying along as time goes forward. Our elevation is staying 37,000 feet. That slope is zero. That line is going neither up nor down. The plane is descending at a rate of 1,000 feet per minute. So from whatever height we were at, it can't be zero if we can't start at zero feet off the ground if we're descending. But if we are descending at a thousand feet per minute, we're going to be going down. That slope will be negative. Now our last one here, should have colored that one. Our last one here, the plane is ascending at a rate of 2000 feet per minute. So ascending, that's the plane on the way up. 2000 feet a minute, that should be steeper than the other one so that slope is going to be positive okay next question is a group of hikers park their car at a trailhead and walk into the forest to a campsite the next morning they head out on a hike from their campsite walking at a steady rate the graph shows their distance in miles D from the car after H hours of hiking. So this graph shows their distance from the car. So they showed up one day, hiked out to a campsite, spent the night. The next day is what this graph is of. So how far is the campsite from their car? Well, this is a graph of how far they are away from their car. But this part of it wasn't done this day. This part was done the night before when they walked from their car to camp. So how far is the campsite from their car? That looks like it is four miles. Write an equation that describes the relationship between D and H. First thing we gotta do is find the slope. Find a couple of nice points. That looks like a rise of three and a run of one. So our slope is three. Our y-intercept our starting value is here, which is 4, which we already talked about. So our equation is going to be y equals m, the slope, which is 3, x plus our starting value, which is 4. Or if we're going to use the variables d and h, d equals 3h plus 4. Okay, next question. After how many hours of hiking will they be 16 miles from the car? So 16 miles from the car, that's a D of 16. That shows up right here on our graph. 
Let me just kindly remove my head from being in the way. That looks like four hours. So four hours after they hike, they are 16 miles away from their car. Okay, next question. Elena's aunt pays her $1 for each call she makes to let people know about her aunt's new business. The table shows how much money Diego receives for washing windows for his neighbors. Select all the statements that are true. Well, I see a couple different relationships here. If Elena pays her aunt one dollar, she gets paid one dollar per call. That's going to be an equation of y equals one x. Let's look at this other one for Diego and see if we can find a unit rate. From 27 to 45 is 18, and he gets $20. So he gets $20 for every 18 windows. Let's give that a unit rate. $20 for 18 windows. Those are both even, so that could be 10 over 9, which is 1 and a ninth. So this equation would be y equals 10 ninths x, a little bit more than 1. So let's think about which of these are true. Just to make space so we can see these a little bigger, I'm going to write it quickly. Elena is 1x and Diego is 10 ninths x. Select all the statements that are true. Elena makes more money for making 10 calls than Diego makes for washing 10 windows. Well, Diego makes more per window, and they're both doing 10, so that is not true, because Diego makes more money than Elena. Diego makes more money for washing each window than Elena does for making each call? Yes, that's true, because he makes one and a ninth dollar per window, compared to her making one dollar per call. Okay, next, Elena makes the same amount of money for 20 calls that Diego makes for 18 windows. Ooh, this one's a little bit tricky. So Elena makes 20 calls. That's E equals 1 times 20. So Elena makes $20. Diego makes 10 ninths times 18 calls. So he gets one and a ninth each. Ten ninths times 18 would be 180 ninths. 180 divided by nine is 20. They make the same amount of money? Yes, they do. They both make $20. So she makes 20 calls, gets $20. He makes 18 calls. He also gets $20. Diego needs to wash 35 windows to make as much money as Elena makes for 40 calls. So Elena makes a dollar per call so Elena's going to make forty dollars for making forty calls. Diego makes one and a ninth and he's supposed to be making thirty-five calls. 
10 ninths times 35. 10 ninths, 1.1 repeating times 35 calls. Well, that's not a 40. That's not a 40 at all. They don't make the same amount. The equation y equals 9 tenths x, where y is the number of dollars and x is the number of windows, represents Diego's situation. No, it doesn't. We already figured that out. He makes 10 ninths, not 9 tenths. The equation y equals x, where y is the number of dollars and x is the number of calls, represents Elena's situation. Yes, it does. That's the same equation we had. We had Elena gets 1x. If there's no 1 in front of the x, if there's no number in front of the x, then it's a 1. There's 1x there. Okay. Looks like we've got one more question. Each square on the grid represents one unit on each side. Match the graph with the slope of the line. I only see one negative number here, and I only see one negative graph. So negative one fourths has to be C. Now looking at the other two, they're both positive. This one's a larger number. Four is bigger than one fourth. That's a steeper slope. Positive in a shallower slope, that's much less than four. That's a much shallower line. Can I double check these? Rise over run, that looks like one over four, but negative, because it's going down. That looks like up one over four, so that's positive, so that checks out. And this one here looks like we go up four over one, so that checks out with positive four. Okay, that's our last question for today. This has been another episode of Mr. Boskin Does Some Math. Thanks for watching. See you next time.